This is the Louis T. Network. Man, I love some football. Man, I love some football. My favorite week is week one, because I'm watching football. First comes the preseason, and I don't take a day off. And then it gets even better when your team makes the playoffs. 32 teams go hard for one thing. They work for one thing. That Super Bowl ring. 32 teams go hard for one thing. They work for one thing. That Super Bowl ring. But your man, Louis T, welcome. You are in the lab room. Of course, I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. Week number two in the National Football League. St. Louis Rams traveling out to Tampa Bay to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And this one was hard to watch, folks. This one was hard to watch. I had to get juiced up just to watch this game. However, at least we got an entertaining finish. This was a sloppy football game between two teams just trying to find a win by hook or by crook. So let's talk about this game and how the St. Louis Rams with a third street quarterback was able to go into Tampa Bay and get a W. Shame on you, Bucks. Shame on you. However, both teams score on their opening possessions. Tampa Bay, their drive was aided by St. Louis Rams penalties. This is the second week in a row St. Louis has been riddled with penalties. And I, I'm a big Jeff Fisher guy, but I always said that Jeff Fisher and his team, they play on the outside of the rules. They color outside of the lines. And now all of a sudden, it seems like his team can't stop being flagged for penalties. It's like, his team has, has taken over where Jim Schwartz and the Detroit Lions left off in terms of being undisciplined. His team just seems to always be getting themselves into trouble with penalties. And it was that way on the first drive for the Buccaneers offensively. As they march right down the field because of St. Louis Ram penalties, they get into the end zone as Josh McCown is able to call his own number and get into the end zone at 7-0 Tampa Bay. Rams come right back down the field, and they, they use a little bit of the passing game, a little bit of the running game, third-string quarterback Austin Davis is in. So you really want to kind of take it slow with him. If you can, you want to run the football and, and take it slow and make sure that he's not turning the football over. And for the most part, they had a really good balance of pass and run in this game. And I was surprised because they actually turned him loose. They let him throw the football, unlike Tampa Bay. And we'll talk about their conservative nature a little bit later on. But they actually let Austin Davis throw the football, and that he did. And they got down the field, and Zach Stacy put an exclamation point on that opening drive by getting into the end zone at 7-7. Seven seven. You wouldn't see any more points scored for a while in this game. There even was a weather delay as it started to thunder and lightning. There were thunderstorms, and there was a warning coming, and it finally came. They got all the players off the field, and there was a little delay in the game that came back on the field and it was just an awkward game and speaking of awkward Austin Davis is awkward to me his form the way he throws the football it's long it's awkward looking the his demeanor is very calm however but he throws jump passes the kid is just awkward there was a reason why he was a third string quarterback I just can't see the Rams winning a lot of games with this kid at quarterback, but I will give him credit. When the game was on the line, he showed moxie and poise. He threw a couple of passes in there, but his everything about him is just wrong. 
uh, in terms of his throwing motion and some of the decision making. But that's what you expect out of a guy that doesn't play a lot and hasn't played in this league and hasn't started it. So for him to come out and perform the way that he did, kudos to you, young fella, for going on the road and getting a win. But let's talk about Tampa Bay. I, I want to talk less about the game and talk about these two teams and where they are right now because I saw a lot in this game, a lot of mistakes. From Tampa Bay, first of all, Josh McCown, you're a veteran. You can't make the mistakes that you make week in and week out as a veteran in this league and expect to have the respect of your team. Now, last week against Carolina, you made some boneheaded decisions. One time the ball even slipped out of your hand and was a turnover. That can't happen if you're going to win games. Now, if you look at it from the standpoint of this game, you got all the way down inside the red zone of the St. Louis Rams. You're guaranteed points. You're going to get points. You can't roll out and because the pressure is imminent, you can't just throw the football up for grabs. You can't just throw an interception. That can't happen when points are assured to you if you just don't turn it over. You were in chip shot field goal range. No excuses for that. That's what losing football teams do. And that's why the Buccaneers are 0-2 right now because of plays like that one. Now you look at it from the Rams' perspective, they made a lot of mistakes in this game, but they were able to overcome them because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers aren't a good football team. Now you got Zach Stacy getting kicked in the face and fumbling the football. Just a lot of nonsense going on in this game. But when it was all said and done, Austin Davis able to take his team down the field and get a field goal late in this game to put them up 19 to 17 in the later stages. Buccaneers out of timeouts with only 33 seconds left have a chance to get down the field. They dump it off to Bobby Rainey. He picks, and he had a phenomenal game. Let me talk about the Buccaneers and their inability to be aggressive. Lovey Smith, and I don't know if it's because of Josh McCown and his penchant to turn the football over, or if it's just Lovey Smith's nature to want to be very conservative. They ran the football way too often in this game. There was a time where you were in the red zone, third and three, and you decided to run the football. This is a passing lead. Third and three is a passing down. Every now and again, a team will try to sneak in a little draw or something like that. But third and three is a passing down in this league. You got down there again, and it was third and two. Third and two is a passing down in this league. Unless you're having success on the ground and you are got and you were not having that kind of success in the red zone. When you were going 20 to 20, Hey, you were having success running the football with Bobby Rainey. Even Mike James had a little bit of success running the football. But when you get into the red zone, things bog down, and it was bogging down in this game, and you simply were too conservative in the red zone, and you had to kick two field goals when you might have been able to pick up first downs and ultimately score touchdowns. One gets blocked. Again, a sign of a bad team when special teams fails you. One gets blocked, the other is made. Nonetheless, 33 seconds left in this game. You have a chance. You dump it off to Rainey, who had a stellar game. He catches it, runs down the field, gets about 17 yards, but he cannot get out of bounds. So you got to run and spike it. 20 seconds left. You get a nice, long completion to Mike Evans, the big kid out of Texas A&M that you drafted to do exactly that, get big catches. Well, he takes a shot. You got to get up, Michael. You got to get up, young fella. You cannot be hurt right there. And if you're hurt, you drag yourself off the field. You don't have any timeouts. This is why I say in games like this, you can't bring the young fellas to the table with you. You can't bring the young fellas with you because they don't know how to act. You saw it on Thursday night with Justin Brown with the Steelers. You can't bring the young fellas. You can't bring young fellas to these type of parties, man, because they don't know how to act. They get a couple of drinks. They start wilding out. And then next thing you know, you got to go because this cat is acting up and you about to get into some trouble. You can't bring the young fellas to the party, man. They don't know how to conduct themselves. Mike can't get off the field. And, and because of that, an injured player means there's a 10-second runoff because you didn't have any timeouts. There was only eight ticks left on the clock. Tampa Bay would have been able to get up, line up, spike the football, and send their rookie kicker out there to attempt a game with a field goal. Instead, 
you don't get an opportunity as that 10 second runoff means the game is over. St. Louis escapes with a 19-17 W on the road. That was pathetic. If you're Tampa Bay, I don't know how it is you let Austin Davis, a third string quarterback, come into your house and get a W. That's unexplainable. The Buccaneers are not 0-2 on the season. Meanwhile, St. Louis gets their first win of the season, their first road win on the road in an opener in 10 years. Unbelievable that Tampa Bay could allow this to happen. Shame on you, Tampa Bay. It seems like this offense has regressed. You got a, a, a huge target out there. You have a huge target out there in Vincent Jackson. V. Jackson is like Larry Fitzgerald and Calvin Johnson. How is the Megatron in my book? You throw him the football a mandatory five times just because. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, just because. Run a nine route, I'm going to just throw it up. Go get it. He made a phenomenal catch where he put his nutsack in the face of a defender and pulled the football down. And you don't give him opportunities. I don't know what's going on. You know what? I don't even care what's going on in Tampa Bay anymore. These guys are cancerous. I'm not messing with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers anymore. Big win for St. Louis on the road. Gives you a little bit of confidence. You're 1-1 one one on the season. Tampa Bay, you stink right now. You're 0-2 on the season. That's going to do it for this wrap-up. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab room. I thank you for joining me. Please come back and join me as I have plenty more teams to break down in week number two in the National Football League. I'll be back in a second. Come back and join me.